Hello everybody, welcome. Let's look into what's new in MPS 2022.3. Constraint rules is one of the features that you might not be aware of. It's been added pretty recently and it's still under development, so the feature might change in the future. There are a few improvements to this feature in, in this release. Let's look at them. Well, the first one is that you can now refer to constraint rules from tests. Now here you see a simple rule. And now when we switch over to a test, it correctly reports the error that is reported by the constraint rules, basically complaining that the routine is defined inside a while block and not at the top level. Now, when we move the routine to the top level, the error disappears. When we move it back, the error is reported again. And now you can actually declare that it is this particular constraint rule reporting an error. Just like with checking rules, you can now attach the error message and the red underline to a particular part of that node, like a property name in this case. So now the error, uh, error underline if we remove this annotation, is now attached to the name, not the whole routine. To help you debug constraint rules, trace messages can be added. You simply add any messaging or logging statements to the trace message part of a rule. I think this could be just a plain statement or a block statement with multiple statements and maybe even some decision logic inside. This will then be generated into code that will properly log the messages that you specify here. The next feature I want to highlight is the ability to add additional methods and fields to some of the aspects of language definition. So here we are back to the ordinary constraints. And now you have the ability to declare additional methods at the bottom of this root node. So you can declare method foo, returning boolean, taking some parameters. And then the method is available in the body of the constraint definition. So this allows you to extract some repetitive code into a method that resides directly in this uh, root node. You don't have to use dedicated utility classes that you would call. And you have the same ability in the other aspects, like in intentions, for example. In addition to additional methods, intentions also give you the ability to create fields. So you can store data that you calculate in the in the is applicable method and then reuse it in the execute method. Similarly, the substitute and transformation menus can have additional methods, just like the type system check-in and inference rules. The way you specify how MPS should compile and load modules has changed. Let's open a sandbox solution first. And now on the Java tab in the module properties, at the top we see a collapsed panel that, when expanded, shows some additional details. Now you see you can specify whether compilation should be done with MPS or by an external compiler or whether you know, by IntelliJ IDEA, which is relevant only when you develop MPS itself, or whether there should be no compilation whatsoever. Then about class, class loading, should MPS do the class loading, or does the module uh, do its own class loading itself, or no class loading should be done at all. And then lastly, or, you know, uh, whether the solution contributes some extensions to MPS, so the, the result of compilation should be loaded into MPS to become part of it or not. Obviously, the information I gave you is rather sketchy. For full details, go to documentation. It's referred to right from here. So you can learn the... So you, you can learn more about each of these options yourself right there. 
Now, if we look at a library solution for a change, which is a module that actually contributes some classes to MPS. So you see the message at the top when the, the panel is collapsed uh, is slightly different. And then in the contribute extensions to MPS, now yes is checked. So you see the UI has changed slightly from the previous version. So now it should give you more, better control of what's happening. We will probably never get tired by adding more and more support for Kotlin into MPS. So here's another dose of new improvements to Kotlin support. To start with something quick, you can now add model root that represents stop models for compiled Kotlin uh, code on JVM. Now, a few small but handy editing improvements. Classes in Kotlin are now root nodes in the language, and they also have a new shiny icon. Check it out. Now, I'll create a little function to illustrate my second point. If, um, well, to insert a constructor call, uh, right transformation is now available. So you can just add a left parenthesis and it will be completed into a constructor call. And it not only works for ordinary classes, but for something more involved, like an array or a by function, which is then instantiated as a lambda. And unsurprisingly, a concept reference is instantiated the, in a proper way using the S model language. The scopes for extension methods has been improved as well. So here we have two extension methods called function added, one of them added to a list of integers, the other to a list of doubles. And now we have a method that takes as a parameter a list of integers. So on that parameter, now calling a function should obviously resolve to the first extension method. So the one that is extending or that is extending a list of integers. So yeah, that's the one. If you try to do the other, then it's out of scope and it will be out to correct it. Now, when we change to a list of doubles, then the original reference is no longer in scope. And the other one is the correct choice now. Third-party libraries have been key to improving the user experience for products built with MPS. Probably the most prominent one is MPS extensions. Now, a frequent complaint has been that the MPS extensions lag behind the MPS releases. So if, if you want to use MPS extensions, you always have to wait quite a while until a, an appropriate MPS extensions version is available. Now, the good news is that we've been working together with ITEMIS, which is our official partner and a main MPS extensions maintainer, to synchronize our releases. So now it should be much smoother for you to migrate to a new version of MPS if you are using MPS extensions in your project. Okay, and that's it. These were all the major improvements in this release. I hope you like them. Goodbye.